love in the words I say. Peace in the world I make. God in every breath I take. Joy in my day. Joy in my day. Good morning. Welcome to Unity Spiritual Center Denver virtually. We're so glad that you chose to spend part of your day with us. My name is David Howard and I am the senior minister here at this beautiful community and we're so glad to have you with us today. And you, uh, you're here on a very special day because we have the amazing uh, Denise Rosier who is going to be sharing her music and message with us today and I know you're going to be blessed by her in so many ways. A couple of things I just want to remind you of that we are partnering with Child Rescue Foundation to support children um, who may not have the opportunity to have Christmas this year. So we are asking you to register, sign up to provide uh, gift cards for them. And you can do that uh, through, if you get our newsletter, there's a link in our newsletter about that. So we would really appreciate you doing that. There are a few names left. Many of you have responded and we're so grateful for that. And we are also partnering with Family Promise of Greater Denver to assist families that are experiencing homelessness in having something to, um, to open or something to have on Christmas morning. So again, we have uh, nine names on the list. We're, it's in Sign Up Genius, but there's a link in our newsletter. So again, I just invite you to go in there, see if there are any names left, because we really want to support these families, and I know that you do too, and you're such, so generous with your gifts 
uh, always. And so we do appreciate that. So I want to remind you, too, that we are a loving, welcoming, inclusive community, and we are so glad to have you here, whoever you are, wherever you are, on your spiritual journey. And I invite you now to say along with me our creed, which is, Our God is love. Our race is human. Our faith is oneness. And now join us as Denise leads us in singing Surely the Presence. How good it is to come together this morning in the idea of spiritual community. So let us know as that we settle into this time together that we are the activation of God's essence. And so we open our hearts, we open our minds, we put aside the doings of our week, and we gift ourselves with the presence of this time together in holy communion with God itself, in holy communion with that idea of spiritual community, right here, right now, where we are. So what I absolutely know is that every person present online with us today is both a blessing and blessed. What I know is that every person that has brought this service to life carries our gratitude with them in their hearts. And what I know is that everything that we are ready to receive becomes a truth that turns up just a little bit louder as we move out into our day, as that goodness and as that blessing that God is. So know with me that our time is blessed, that God is good right here where we are and that this service unfolds in perfect divine order. And so it is. Amen. Tiny drops of water Bouncing on my roof Drumming out a song of love Pounding out the truth You send them to remind me One for every blessing on me And oh, they keep coming Overflowing Every day your goodness finds me Every day I'm alive in the light and the glory, amazed by the sight of you. This love is everlasting, and you find a way to show me every day, every day. In the rush of freeway traffic, in the hush of a sunset You get my attention I'm listening It's a private conversation You and I in one vibration And oh, it moves me So amazing Every day Man! 
days by the side of you. This love is everlasting, and you find a way to show me every day, every day. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. You love me. Good morning, Denver Unity. This is Denise Rosier. I am so excited to be with you this morning. Not only do I get to share my music, but I also get to share this message. So many, many thanks to Reverend David for giving me this time with you. And thank you for being here with me this morning. Today's affirmation is, every day goodness finds me. My good has no boundaries. We say that with me every day. Goodness finds me. My good has no boundaries. And today I want to talk to you about goodness. In the song that I just sang, the chorus is every day your goodness finds me. Every day your heart beats true. I'm alive in the light and the glory and amazed by the sight of you. When I wrote every day, I wrote it to illustrate how God's fingerprints show up in mundane, everyday situations. At any point in our day, we can look around and see that we are on God's mind. We can see or feel or experience something that will affirm for us that the universe is on our side. I think this is particularly important because Even though we fundamentally know that's true, we totally believe it, there are times we can get a little bit wobbly in it. Like when you are a musician in a pandemic and you wake up on March 16th and go, what is happening? What am I supposed to do now? It's situations like that or moments like that when the goodness of God particularly enfolds us and surrounds us. Now, before we go any farther, let's talk about goodness. What is goodness? I think that we think we know what it means because it has the word good in it and we know what good means. But right where you are, take a second to define goodness and why it should find you every day. The second part of that question is when we go, mm, maybe, I, maybe I don't know what goodness is. So I'm going to define it for you in three parts. The first part is when we use goodness in place of the word God. So we say, thank goodness or for goodness sake. We always do that. And the reason is because We are using it in place of God or a divine power. The second way that we use goodness is when we describe something that nourishes us or is vital to our lives. So broccoli has that vitamin goodness. Or my favorite, filled with that chocolatey goodness. I don't know if chocolate is particularly nourishing, but I do know that it is good. 
finally, um, the third way that we use goodness is in describing the essence of good. So now do you see what is finding you every day? A divine power, which is nourishing, which nourishes your soul and is vital to your life and is the very essence of good itself. This is what is finding a myriad of ways to show you that it is everywhere and in everything. Now, the important part is, will you recognize it? Will you make room for it? And will you allow it to come in and take root in your life? And that's important because it shapes the way that you think and you live. And the way you think and live shapes the reality that you are creating for yourself every day. Now, um, here's an example. In the first line of my song, this person wakes up on a rainy day and hears the rain on her roof. Tiny drops of water bouncing on my roof. You send them to remind me, one for every blessing on me, and oh, they keep coming, overflowing. Now, what if I had written tiny drops of water bouncing on my roof? That sound literally drives me insane, and it ruins my plans to go out every day. Same rain, same day, same roof, same universe, same person, but a markedly different attitude created a completely different reality that they stepped into that day. That's why our thoughts are so important. And understanding that the goodness of God always finds us And our willingness to live with our minds pointed toward that good really hit home for me one day when my mom called to tell me that one of her dogs had died. I was hiking out in Red Rock Open Space in Colorado Springs. It was a fantastic day. The sky was blue. You know, it was the forest and uh, the trees and just really having this wonderful God time. And then my phone rang. And normally I wouldn't pick up the phone while I'm hiking, but it was my mom. And so I had to answer the phone. And what unfolded during that phone call, I realized was this amazing life lesson that was unfolding in two parts. One was in the story and the other was in the storyteller. And I ended up calling it the parable of the Yorkies. So check this out. Now, first, you need a little bit of background. Since the 80s, my parents always had Yorkshire Terriers as pets. Always two, always Yorkies. And the only thing that ever differed about those dogs were their names and the degree to which they smelled. And this particular set, the current set, is Muffin and Lucy. Muffin spends her day in a constant flow of goodness. Um, In fact, she kind of spends it in this um, stream of consciousness. So she'll wake up and um, she'll run over and chase the cat. And then when she's done terrorizing the cat, she'll just fall down and take a nap. And if you call her, her ears will pick up and she'll look at you and she'll run toward you to be petted unless she needs to scratch herself or unless something else has caught her attention. But it's just this whirlwind of happiness and being alive in the moment and just every part of her day is good. Um, I don't know if dogs actually have uh, thoughts. I don't know if this one, (laughs) if Muffin does, but um, I do believe that Muffin has never had an angry or negative thought in her whole life. Lucy, Lucy was skittish 
and she always had one eye on Muffin. So what's Muffin doing that maybe I should get in on? Is Muffin getting a snack that um, I'm going to miss out on if I don't go over there? Who's petting Muffin that should be petting me? This is the way Lucy lived every day. And so um, when it came to snack time, my mom, if she was going to give a snack to the dog, she would have to give Lucy hers first, and then Muffin would just wait over on the side. And Muffin would just wait there like, I don't know what kind of snack I'm going to get. I don't know when it's going to come, but I know I'm going to get it, and it's going to be great. So one day when my mom was giving Lucy um, a snack. She dropped it down on the floor and Lucy started to hoard it and she started to growl. And I think that she heard Muffin in the background and so she got particularly um, agitated and she gobbled up her snack and she choked on it and she died. And when I listened to that story, I thought about the dog's personalities, and I actually was not surprised that Lucy had choked. But what I thought was interesting was what my mom said next. And she said, this is the lesson that God showed me. You could die at any time. You never know when it's going to happen, and so your soul should be ready. And I thought, I don't think that's the lesson at all. I think the lesson is in the dogs. Lucy spent her whole life living in fear and lack, afraid that her good was going to be taken from her at any moment. And so she had to hoard it. And she lived like that right up until the day she died. In fact, it killed her. Muffin lives this life of happiness like she's always going to be receiving, like it doesn't bother her. She knows her good is coming. I asked my mom, you're the provider of everything. Did it ever enter your mind that you would give something to Muffin and not Lucy? No. Lucy had no reason to live like that. Imagine the quality of her life. Every every morning she woke up, she was running interference, trying to make sure that, that Muffin wasn't getting something that she should have had. Or that some good, something great wasn't happening to Muffin that she was going to miss out on. Muffin lives her life as if she knows she's blessed. She's still living in that way today. Still happy. Still receiving. Still abundant. In fact, she's so abundant in her snacks that Christy and I call her barrel. But you know what? She's going to live like that until her very last day. Two dogs, the same house, the same circumstances, the same opportunities, but two completely different ways of living in the world that yielded distinctly different qualities of life. And when I pulled back a little bit from that story, I realized that my mom and I had actually entered into kind of a Muffin and Lucy situation. And this isn't a judgment on my mom, because I think that you take away what you take away. But it did illustrate for me, um, kind of where you set your mind makes such a big difference on what you're going to take with you. Because my mom had shifted her focus onto Lucy She saw Lucy as this admonition, as this warning. And for me, my focus was on Muffin. And I saw Muffin as this amazing um, example of when you have an attitude of, or an understanding of, my good is for me. It can't be taken away. It can't be transferred to somebody else. Mine is for me. 
somebody else's good is for them. So I don't need to look over my shoulder. I don't need to covet what somebody else has. Um, The universe is abundant and so am I. Um, There's enough for everybody. And so I'm not going to live with this in this state of fear that my life or my opportunities or my sense of well-being could be taken away at any moment. I'm not going to hoard myself emotionally or socially or financially because all of that restriction will choke me. So my mom and I, two people, hearing the same, scenar- the same scenario, the same story, the same opportunity to translate it. But how differently did we both step back into our lives after that phone call? There's a Bible verse that I really like that I think describes this well, and that is Psalm 145.16. Psalm 145, 16 says, God, you open up your hands and satisfy the desire of every living thing. And I think that Muffin would probably agree with that one. Every day, your goodness finds me. Every day, your heart beats true. I'm alive in the light and the glory and amazed by the sight of you. This love is everlasting, and you find a way to show me every day, every day. God will find a million ways to show you every day that you are loved and supported and abundant. It could be materially. It could be in raindrops that fall on your roof and count out every single blessing. It could be in uh, reassurance that comes from some well-timed phone call from a friend. Or it could be in the wisdom of animals. Will you recognize it? Will you make room for it? And will you allow it to seep in and fill and cover all of those places where you might be a Lucy instead of a muffin? Think about your first thoughts when you wake up in the morning and you see a sunrise. Do you think, yep, there it is. That's the universe celebrating my life. It does it every morning. Every morning I wake up, universe celebrates my life with some amazing sunrise. Or do you look past the sunrise at the impending morning and think of all of the have to's and don't want to's and things that are going to be a pain in your ass that day? It's the same morning. It's the same you the same opportunity to make a choice of how you're going to receive that goodness. And it's not only that we get reminders of goodness. You can be a reminder of goodness. Because every one of us, I am pretty sure, knows a Lucy. Somebody at work, a family member, a friend, We all know that person who wants to sit us down and talk to us about what's not working for them, how everything's, how things are falling apart. Here's all of my problems. They just want to run through those. Every time they talk to you, they want to bend your ear about it. You can be a seed planter right then to remind them of goodness, to encourage them to recognize make room for, and allow the goodness of God. And in that way, you show up as goodness in their day. 
And the cool thing about that is when you do that, your mind and your actions are focused now on finding the goodness of God. Every day, goodness finds you. Your good knows no boundaries. Every day, goodness finds you, and your good knows no boundaries. Thank you for spending this time with me this morning. And as you get ready to go out into the rest of your Sunday and the rest of your week, be lifted up in all the goodness that's going to find you and in all the ways that it does. Bless you guys. Why don't we say our meditation together? Every day, goodness finds me. My good has no boundaries. Let's say it one more time. Every day, goodness finds me. My good has no boundaries. And now I just want to invite you guys to close your eyes. Take a deep breath and release it. Every day goodness finds me. My good has no boundaries. And right where you are, just feel supported by the chair that you're sitting in, by the room around you, by all of nature and the vastness of this universe and all the love that surrounds you. By the sound of my voice that wishes only the very best for you. Take another deep breath and release it. Right where you are, you are sitting in the divine power that nourishes you. You are sitting in the middle of the very essence of good itself. Feel it unfolding you. Feel it whispering words of love to you. And now listen as it shares the ways goodness has shown up in your life this week. your mind, picture yourself writing those things down. Or maybe saving a snapshot of those things. And Whenever you need to be reminded of God's goodness, close your eyes and read that note or look at that picture. Fill your mind with Reminders of all the ways the goodness of God has surrounded you and enfolded you. Now take a moment to think of someone that you know who needs to be reminded that goodness finds them every day. Be a source of goodness for them. Just hold them in your heart and say their name in this affirmation every day. Goodness finds you. Your good has no boundaries. God is goodness. I 
I am goodness. I live in the heart of goodness. Every day. And now I'm going to invite Christy to come and lead us out of meditation and prayer. How good it is to come together in the name of spiritual community. How good it is to come together in our faith. And how good it is to activate on this truth that goodness prevails inside and out, always and in all ways. So let us know together this morning that as we bring our time to a close, that that truth of goodness finding its way to us in the midst of circumstances and situations that sometimes leave us scratching our heads, that we know indeed that it is ours to change our perspective and to anchor into that truth. Sometimes we are the receivers of that good and so ours is to open our hearts as wide as possible to accept and receive all of the love that is sourced by the one in an infinite number of ways. And sometimes we are the author and it is ours to write those notes of love and to share them and to activate and call to life that goodness for others. And so what I know for all of us this morning is that both of those paths are true and that we say yes to them individually and collectively as we go forward in our day and out into this world, knowing that no matter what we experience or face, no matter what is shown or presented to us, that we respond from that knowingness that goodness finds its way to me always and in all ways. Holding tight to that truth as a giver and a receiver, I know indeed that our time together has been blessed, that we accept this truth for ourselves and each other, and we go forward into the world as that goodness that God has indeed created, as me, as you, as Denver Unity, and as this world at large. For that, I give thanks. I know beyond a measure of a doubt that this truth has been spoken into the law and activated on, and it is ours to fully express. And so together, let us collectively say yes, and so it is.
So now is the time in our service where you have the opportunity to give from your good to help support the ministry here at Unity Spiritual Center Denver. And so there are many ways to do that. You will see that displayed on your screen right now. We're so grateful for all who give and support this ministry. We are indeed blessed by you in so many ways. So now I invite you to say along with me our offertory blessing. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful.
So thank you, Denise Rosier, for blessing us this morning with your music, with your beautiful message. We are so blessed to have you with us this morning. Thank you again for being here. And now I want to invite you to join me as we say our closing prayer. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is. And so it is. Amen. Now join me as we sing our closing song. Love can move the world As the moon in the sky moves the sea Love can cause the wars to cease Love can move this world to peace It's a tide that begins with you and me Love can move the world As the warmth of the sun moves the trees Feel the wind of love increase As we move this world to peace Come love the world with me Come love the world with me